Up next on Dreamhouse. We've had frustrations with him. He's had frustrations with us. There's curveballs in the downstairs master bedroom. How much? And some of their personal items are gone paradise. I think Robert really thought he would call us on a bluff. Um, you don't do that with us. It was, if you leave right this second, it's over. And I said, then it has to be over. Hi, I'm Jackie Lyons. It's been 15 months since the Smiths laid ground on their four-bedroom, five-and-a-half bath house here in Beaufort, South Carolina. And completing construction has become a top priority for the family. While they continue to live in their hometown of Douglasville, Georgia, nearly five hours away, Larry and Cheryl are spending as much time as possible at the building site. We're paying you to do these kinds of things for us. Recent confrontations with their builder, Robert Long, have emphasized once again the need for more involvement and one-on-one -on -one communication. One of the things we hope to do when we're here today and tomorrow is to sit down with Robert and go over the schedule that he's laid out and see where we can, uh, we can save some time, where we can overlap some things that can be overlapped so we can bring in the completion date. They thought that... Uh, you can make a schedule, write it down, and stick right to it. Even though Larry's extra customizing jobs are often the source of Robert's delays, Cheryl pushes to wrap up interior work on the upstairs within the next two weeks. That we've got to start moving some things in at that time frame. If there's some minor things uh, left over uh, that have to be done, then we'll just have to work around those. Finishing the second floor bedroom means Beaufort. And also, imitation bedroom paradise. Well, the objective uh, for us moving upstairs is to have a place to sleep so we don't have to make these uh, horrendous day trips. Right. Um, right. We got up at four this morning and we're here, uh, but my brain is not working too good at the moment. Uh, but it will allow us to to come and stay two, three days, whatever we need to, here in the house, be here to have a full productive day on site. And having Larry on site to finalize trim details is Cheryl's best hope for completing work without further delay. He needs to be involved with like the range hood, with the, uh, the mantle, the fireplace, uh, the niche. Envisioning how he wants certain areas to look may be Larry's forte, but conveying this information to Robert has been one of his downfalls. It's somewhere between Larry's imagination and Robert's imagination as to how it's going to be done, but you know it hasn't been finalized and put down on paper. Uh, I purposely didn't reveal all of the details and the things that were going in the house um, uh, early on. Uh, as the house progresses and as things are needed on the side, we can start noticing the details. Um, the plans that we had to build by were basic house plans and did not include um, some of these special details. With the house well into its second year of construction, and still months behind schedule, both Larry and Cheryl want the house. <laughs> He's done an excellent job. His crews have done an excellent job. Uh, he has just been so slow about uh, coming to completion. Uh, we're all frustrated with one another. We just want to be out of each other's hair. We want the project to be finished. Um, you know, budget has been shot 10 months ago. And budget, as Robert sees it, is the driving force behind his most recent problems with the Smiths. As the project goes further along, of course, um, as uh, on, on any house of this stature, I mean, and, and this detail, 
uh, the, the cost mount. So uh, you know the price prices tend to tend to tend to rise farther than you think they would. As exterior and interior trim work continue, installation of the imitation tin ceilings for the downstairs master bedroom and the upstairs foyer is surprising. They're ready to, uh, to replicate the old type of square tiles that you would see in drugstores, etc. In, in the past. Like so many of the surprising products that the Smiths have ordered independently of their builder, what sounded dull requires more time for the surprising crew. It's a new product for them. They've never installed uh, the tiles like this before in the ceilings. I wanted the attic stairs to disappear. Uh, not to be trimmed out, but when they're closed and everything's painted, they really just kind of disappear into the ceiling. The special custom touches on the foyer are another of the imitation tin ceilings being thrown at Robert. With all these new products to learn about, combined, we, we, we spent tremendous amounts of time getting, doing these two things, you know, combining these two things. Completion of the wood floors in the living room has been delayed until Larry and Robert's assistant Robert can supply the final measurements for the English mantel, Swedish firebox, English mantel, and marble hearth. Let me center this. Let me see what that size looks Surprisingly, like. templates representing the marble yeah, no. don't fit. Let me center this. Let me see what and that it's size the looks second like. time around on determining the right size, size, size for the surprising that marble. Size. I had to uh, buy a new, new marble surround. I shouldn't have bought the, the first one five years ago still in the basement. This time with Robbie's help, Larry can provide the marble cutter with precise dimensions for the heart. Finishing this section of the room moves things one step closer to completion. And when we come back, a disappearing act. I mean, the house is, is vacant. Everything is gone. Another dilemma. I have not a clue at this point how we're going to pull it off. And a surprising departure. It was, if you leave right this second, it's over. And I said, then it has to be over. to speed up work, tighten the budget, and complete construction within weeks as opposed to months is only adding to the tension that already exists between Cheryl Smith and builder Robert Long. Spending less time at the building site and relying heavily on his assistant to coordinate with the Smiths. I was steadily on this project month after month after month while having two other houses that were getting almost no attention. He was wanting to do things more in a serial fashion as opposed to overlapping some things that you can overlap. We've had frustrations with him, he's had frustrations with us and, and things that uh, he didn't agree with. Robert's caring about the project is 100%. His design work is great. The paperwork that the, uh, the, the Smiths demanded was tremendous. We had to provide every little detail. The problems between Cheryl and Robert are leaning to a showdown. On Tuesday, everything was going great. Uh, I came over. I didn't see Robert. He was tied up with some other activities that he had going on. But I did meet with the carpenters and some of the other crews that were here. But the confrontation comes sooner than anyone expects. And then on Wednesday morning when I uh, got here. All of Robert's crews and his subs were, were packing up and leaving the job site. They were not packing up to, to leave for the afternoon. Uh, you don't take your trash cans and you don't take all your ladders and you don't take your 
your lights and everything like that to be gone just for an afternoon. And in the interim, Cheryl has been surprising Robert. And he said, well, he had to have his people off the job site to go to work on another project. I had to start giving these other houses some attention. I mean, it was only fair. I, I'm not quite sure what, um, what, what pushed Robert to the point of making the decision to move the crews off. Uh, it came as a surprise in the fact that, that he did that. When I uh, started pulling off to, to visit, just at least visit, and show these other people that, uh, that I did have a crew and had a, had a construction company, um, they uh, couldn't understand that. They wanted me to stay and, uh, to completion. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere else. Um, I, I couldn't do that. Everything just kind of came to a head. Surprisingly, Larry and Cheryl now face one of their greatest dilemmas since construction began. If they hope to stay on schedule, what's their next move? I realized you know, there was no guarantee when he would be back. Uh, you know, it could be a week, it could be a month, and we weren't going to sit around and just wait. I think Robert really thought he would call us on a bluff. Um, you don't do that with us. If you're playing poker, you better have the winning hand, and he did not have the winning hand. If he left, he wasn't coming back. Surprisingly, there is one more attempt at resolution. I even offered to, to give it a second shot and come back the next morning and talk it over. And um, that wasn't good enough. Even that wasn't good enough. It, it, was, it was, if you leave right this second, it's over. And I said, then it has to be over. And so, builder Robert Long's involvement with the Smith's house comes to an abrupt and disappointing end. Now minus one builder and no crews, the Smiths are left with few places to turn for help. And coming up next on Dreamhouse, there's a setback in Beaufort. Almost 